9.4 is exploring quotients of functions. So I'm, I'm sure by now you're figuring out that this stuff isn't very hard, right? <laughs> um, and we're doing the same thing over and over again. So by now we should just go, oh yeah, yeah, this is the same thing, only now we're going to divide. And that's exactly what it is. But since how I hadn't actually done a graph for you, I thought I would show you how you would go about doing this if you didn't have access to using your calculator. Um, some of them are, are a little more challenging. This one was fairly basic, but you still have to kind of uh, look at what happens at the ends of your graph as you're approaching infinity, what, what's going to happen to the graph. So I did um, 1c from your textbook. It was 4x divided by x squared plus 4. So what I did was I made a little table. So I have my x values. I have my f at x, which is 4x. My g at x, which is x squared plus 4. I evaluated those for values between minus 3 and 3 initially. And then I decided I would do a few extras here to see what was happening as we went out farther. And then all you do is you divide them. So minus 12 over 13, minus 8 over 8, minus 4 over 5, etc. Okay, so you end up with this really pretty little graph like this. It, it only goes up to 1 and minus 1. Those are your max and minimum values that you see here and here. And if you look at what, what's happening here, you can see it's coming down as I go out at 5. I got 20 over 29. But if you, um, if you actually put it into your calculator, and I'm hoping I still, oh yeah, I still have it here. So here, here's the graph on your calculator. It, it looks pretty similar. But if I want to know what's happening as I go out here, of course, all you have to do is change the window so that your x scale, let's say we'll make the x scale go out to 50. And then you can see what's happening here as we go out, it's approaching zero. You can also check on your table. So second function over the graph here is the table. And if you look at 100, you can see it's 0 0.03998. And you can keep scrolling down and you'll see that as you go down farther and farther, it's getting closer and closer to zero. You probably have to go out. You can put in an X value here. Well, let's just scroll along. Okay, there you go. Look, it's going down. It's down to 0 0.025. And if I put in an X value, um, let me see if I can remember how to do that. What second calc? A value. So let's put X is 1000. And it's a quit. Okay. Well, <laughs> it was a good try. Okay. So you can see that it is approaching zero way, way up there. But that's all your teacher would probably expect you to do. Just a little division. Okay. So another quotient question, the last one, <clears throat> I found it a little confusing and thought I would um, explain. Uh, let me pull up the question here. Okay. It says, recall that the function, recall that this function models the growth of a sunflower. Well, I, I didn't recall that at all. Maybe it showed up earlier in the textbook. <coughs> but yeah, you recall this is how a sunflower grows, where HT is the height in centimeters of, and T is the time in days. And the first question says, calculate the average rate of growth of the sunflower over the first 20 days. So for the first 20 days, the average growth. So you have to know what was the growth at time zero. So time zero. So we need t zero and we need t t zero equals. So I'm going to plug in zero here. So 0 0.9 to the power of zero is one. Uh, one and 24 is 25. And then I'll have to divide here. So I'm going to do 260 divided by 25. And that's going to give me um, 10.5. Four. So at time zero, it was 10.4 centimeters. And at time 20, I put in 20 for my, um, my little value here. So I have 260 and I'm dividing that by, don't forget a bracket here, because if you just put in divided by one plus this, it's going to divide it by one and then add. You don't want to do that. So make sure you put brackets. 
So 24 times 0.9 to the power of, and uh, we want 20. And we get 66.363. 66.363. Okay, so what's the average growth over those first 20 days? So the average growth is going to be the slope of the secant. Right? So I have 10.4. So average growth equals 10.4 minus 66.363 over 0 minus 20. Or you could have written it the other way, right? That probably would have been a little more, make a little more sense. So I already have that in here, so I'll divide it by 10.4 and divide that by 20. And I get 2.798. Approximately 2.798. Now, don't forget when you're doing average growth or instantaneous growth, all these rates of change, you need units. So it would be 2.798 centimeters per day. Those were the um, units that they gave you. When will it be at half its maximum value? We've got lots of sunshine coming in here today, which is making some shadows. Hopefully that's not too annoying for you. When will it be at half its maximum height? Well, what's its maximum height? How do you know what the half the maximum height is here? So if you look at this equation here, the maximum height, we want to know what happens as t gets really, really big, right? As t gets big, what happens to 0 0.9? So if you did a graph of 0.9 to the power of t, you would have a function that comes down like this, right? It's going to approach zero because it's a decay graph. Remember that when you do 0.9, let me just show you here for a second. If I do 0.9 to the power of 100, um, look, I get 2.6561 times 10 to the negative 5. So you have to move the decimal way over. So I'm approaching zero as this gets really big. So if this becomes 0, then 24 times 0 is 0, and my maximum height would be 260. That's not maybe not obvious to you at first, but I think now that you've seen it, you will know what to do. So maximum height is 260 centimeters, and I want to know when is it going to be half of that. So this is one of those lovely calculations where you get to set this, equal to this and then solve and I think back when you started this course you would have thought oh my god how am I ever going to solve that right that's really a difficult question but all you have to do is multiply both sides by this so I didn't leave much room for this did I so it's going to be 130 1 times 1 is 130 and 130 times 24 gives me 3120 so plus 3120 times 0 0.9 to the power of t and that's going to be equal to 260 so you can subtract this over here that's going to give you 130 we could probably have done this in less steps. So 130, and then I divide by 3120, 0 0.9 to the power of t equals 130 over 3120. So I just divided here, and now I do the log. So t times the log, t log 0 0.9 equals the log of 130 over 3120 and if you do all that work so let's let's do that right here so I have the log let's do 130 divided by 3120 equals this so I want the log of my answer and I'm going to divide that by the log where's my log of point 
nine. And I get 30.163 approximately. So that means it will be at half its maximum height in 30 days. 30 days. Happy face. Okay, um, the last question says, what is the instantaneous rate of change at, at your answer to B? So I want to know what is the instantaneous rate of change at 30 days. So recall an instantaneous rate of change. I have an equation. So I can use a really small interval. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to evaluate h at 30 and h at 30.1. So instantaneous rate of change is going to be h at, uh, let's do 30.1. So let's just plug it in this time. So I have 260 over 1 plus 24 times 0 0.9 to the 30.1 okay so that's h at 30.1 just plugging it into this equation here minus h at 30 so I have 1 plus 24 times 0 0.9 to the power of 30 and I'm going to divide that by the rate of change here so I've, I've gone 0 0.1 and if you do all that, I'm just going to tell you the answer. I get about 6.848, and that is centimeters per day. Don't forget your units. You're going to say that to yourself when you do your test, every time you do a rate of change. Oh yeah, Miss Averett always says, don't forget your units. Okay, so if you, um, if you actually graphed this function, let's put that into the, oops, I didn't want that. I want that. I want y equals. Okay, so we're going to plug in the equation. So remember when you're using your calculator, and sometimes the calculator skills are a little challenging. And again, I'm dividing by all of this, this 1.1 1 1 plus 24. So when you put it in your calculator, you need to put a bracket first. And remember, the reason that is, is because what your calculator is going to do, it's going to do 260 divided by 1, which is 260, and then it's going to add this, which is not what you want at all, right? So I want 1, I've got it in brackets, 1 plus 24 times 0 0.9 to the power of t, or x in this case. And I'm going to graph it. Oh, really bad window. So what did we have? We had um, 260. So we've got, we need to go to a maximum height of, let's say, two, let's say 300. And how many days? So we were out 30 days was half. So let's go, let's go 70 days. Let's take a look at the graph now. Okay, so there you can see as we go off in time here, this is starting to flatten out. So it's just like trees and everything else that grow. They only grow so tall and then they stop growing. They, they can't bring enough water up or genetically they're set up to go to a certain height. So the question was what happens to the graph as you approach infinity? What happens to the rate of change? So the rate of change slows down. Right? Your plant grows and grows and grows and then it just levels off. So it becomes pretty horizontal up here at the top. And that's dividing by quotients. Not a very difficult lesson. I hope you, uh, you learned something from this little video and uh, come back for the next one, which will be a little more challenging when we do some combinations of functions. That old fog and golf stuff that you did in grade 11.